Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. Thank you so much for your continued support of our channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow. Ring that bell. So when you subscribe, move that bell to getting all updates of our future content. We thank you so much as we get closer and closer to 5,000 subs. We are now sitting right now at 4,932 subscribers. We are 68 off of 5,000. Help us get there today. I'd appreciate it. That'd be awesome. And that'll be a great milestone for us in our eighth month with our podcast. <clears throat> that said, let's just jump into the topic of the day. Shannon Sharp went in on Drea Carter on first take. He called her out. He wouldn't let her off the hook, even though Stephen A. Smith was flip floppity. And, and what frustrates me so much about when I was listening to this stuff is while Stephen A. Smith sticks to this marketing thing, they try to attach it to the fact that she just wasn't good enough at the time and that she wasn't playing better than all these guards at the time. Now, obviously, since the uh, since the Olympic break, Caitlin Clark was dominating. Um, one would say one could also say that she was dominating before the break. She was averaging 17 and a half points, eight and a half assists, almost six rebounds, playing exceptionally well. Yeah, she wasn't perfect, but she was doing she was playing better than the women that were on the all that, that were on the Olympic team, the Chelsea Gray, the Diana Taurasi, the Kelsey Plum, uh, you know, Jackie Young. Uh, Sabrina was probably the one that you could say was neck and neck with her. And then in the second half of the year, Sabrina has been absolutely terrible. But yesterday, <clears throat> Drea Carter's on first take, and she has her little thing where she tries to act like she didn't say certain things and act like she's not part of the outside noise that she claims existed and of course while molly Kerm is pandering as well it becomes a a male versus female fight on the on the screen and it just gets so tired and old and what's crazy about it is that you hear how ridiculous they sound that being drea carter and molly Kerm, who won't drea carter would not answer the question asked and I'll let you check it out for a second. But Drake Carter would never actually answer the question. And then she, she goes into some other nonsense, but I'll let you take a listen here. Playing the game and being herself out there on the floor while also dealing with a ton of BS and noise off the court. Caitlin Clark can be used as a unit of measurement from here on out when it comes to noise around the game of basketball. We will be able to in the future say, well, this compares to what Caitlin Clark had to deal with because there was so much noise and she dealt with it and she handled it and her team is in the playoffs. It is a master class when you think about the way she was able to perform this season as a rookie. Well, the only level of opposition I would throw into the mix with what Andrea just said is that, you know what? No, I don't know if you know this. She, she said hi to Molly. She didn't say she didn't tell us. Hello. How are you? She said nothing. to me. Just really? Molly. I mean, I just mean, we just hit. We, we just, just went, you know we just what went right. straight into it, it, it's all kid. right. It's all right. No, 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 no. It's OK. It's OK. It's all right. I got it. I got it. I can't dispute the Andre. No, I'm gonna mess with her. She know that with her snake love itself. Here's the deal. I'm not mean, literally snakes, ladies. We're not even talking like, about made about Caitlin Clark in terms of the BS that she had to deal with off the court. You got to remember, she's been box office. She was the main attraction, and there were so many storylines that's been associated with her. Most recently, the whole thing with her and Cheryl swooping, though it really wasn't her. It was Cheryl swoops and all this. Every time you turned around, there was something that she had to deal with. The reason I bring that up, and I love that, because as a rookie, as a rookie, ladies and gentlemen, put this in perspective. Caitlin Clark finished the regular season leading rookies in scoring field goals made, three-point field goals made, assists, steals, and minutes played, and she led the league in assists and three-pointers made. Think about that for a second, Ian. Like Shannon says, ultimately, you first team. You one of those people. So we got and fourth in the league in MVP voting. Okay, fourth. 
So you got to give love where it's due. But oftentimes, when we take this, let's think about the comparisons we may make to people in other sports. People, when they talk about boxing, Andrea, Shay, Molly, they might, they'll say Muhammad Ali was the greatest. Now, Floyd Mayweather might dispute that. Sugar Ray Leonard might dispute that. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, if he was still alive, got rid of so might dispute that, along with various others. But the reason why in the public eye, Ali was the greatest was because of the adversity. It's not to compare one to the other. So let's talk about that real quick. <clears throat> the adversity. The adversity was clear as day. There's no other female basketball player, woman basketball player in the WNBA who has dealt with the type of nonsense that Caitlin Clark has had to deal with this year. It's the it's the, the outside noise is not from the outside. It's not just the outside as far as social media. The outside noise tr truly is generated from inside the WNBA. The outside noise has been generated by people like Andrea Carter, like Molly Kiram, like Chine Ogumuke, like Monica McNutt, like Carolyn Peck, like all of these pundits who jump on their soapbox and try to tell us why she's not good enough, even though our eyes see that she was mopping the floor with these ladies in the first half of the season. When this team was selected, she was averaging 17, 7, and 6. She was better than all of them at that point. Would you really argue and debate some, debate me or debate anyone to sit here and say that she is not a better player than every single guard who made the Olympic team? If you if you are, then you're just full of shit. Because no one produced at a higher level this season than Caitlin Clark. And she was already doing so when that Olympic team was selected. She was producing more points when that team was selected. <clears throat> so this nonstop rhetoric that they want to continue with, but let's continue. Because I'm not trying to do that. I'm simply pointing out that what goes on outside the court, the field. The Let me skip ahead here. Regardless of whatever noise has been out there. So when you show that oh, you're but, able to perform in the face of adversity, to me, that is the true testament to greatness. And that's why we're looking at her and we're saying greatness is on the way. Stephen A., I would be remiss if I didn't say this. A lot of this noise came by people that were sitting on this network. They tried to minimize her. Say what well, you did. You see how Stephen A. sat back in his chair when Shannon Sharp said, "By people in this network, on this network, you see Shannon Sharp sitting up straight, shoulders back. He's like, no, you're not going to get away with this crap. You try to paint us like misogynists." like sexist pigs a couple of months ago who don't know anything about basketball because it's women's basketball. So because it's women, we don't know anything about basketball, even though basketball is basketball. And we know what good basketball is, and we know what bad basketball is. So when you see him perk up like that, and you see Stephen A. Smith like, oh, boy, here he comes giving her all this credit what about the women that came before her what the women came before her what they did cannot be taken away that ain't got nothing to do with caitlin clark but there's a lot of people tried to make sure they keep caitlin clark in her place because what you're doing if you give her all this shine you minimize what they done you can't minimize what my more or candace parker or lisa leslie or Lauren Jackson, or De Diana Taurasi, or Simone Augustus, or any of the other great players. Exactly. You can't minimize any of it. You can't minimize any of it. And that's what's that's maddening. So let's move on to this next Stephen one. A, I would be remiss if I didn't say things. We saw the merchandise thing, but we should have been giving her the Diana yeah. Taurasi, or Simone Augustus, or any of the other great players. That. Caitlin Clark, what she's doing doesn't minimize what they've done. 
but we should have nope. been giving her the credit. We saw the ratings. We saw the merchandise sales. We saw the attendance. But y'all want to make it make it about something else. Oh, what about the women that laid the foundation? What about this? What about it? That ain't got nothing to do with Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark is box office. She's doing this. And instead of giving her credit. And I apologize for the graininess of the video as it's chopping up. I recorded the screen and the screen did that while it was recording. So it was, and I did it multiple times and it kept doing it at that point. This is directly off of uh, first take ESPN.com. <clears throat> y'all tried to make it about, oh, y'all poo pooing the old guard. Y'all never talked about the old guard like this. Nah, I ain't gonna let it slide. <laughs> Caitlin Clark, unanimous rookie of the year. But what's even more impressive, she's first team WNBA. First. You know you know, Shannon, I, I'm, I, I hear you. See, fuck her. See, that's when she does that shit. You, you, you know, you, you know, Shannon. I, I hear you. I hear you. No, you don't, because you're part of that guard that's trying to protect some shield of old women that aren't. That the reality was they had no following, and y'all are a bunch of jealous ass people who are mad. This is all jealousy based. Nothing else. But let's continue. Right, I hear you 100%. But another level of noise was coming from people. I, you were one of them who also tried to create a picture around Caitlyn that the league was against her. Goddamn right the league has been against her. The league has been against her all fucking season. Have you not been paying attention? See, this is when people are just so disingenuous in, in what they say. The league has clearly been against her. They've allowed her to get fucking physically assaulted in so many games. It's out of control. She just got eye gouged in the first game of the playoffs, and a foul wasn't even called. Let alone a flagrant foul, a foul wasn't called. We haven't seen anything about any type of investigation talking about this situation. There's nothing. DJ Carter should be suspended, and it hasn't even been discussed. There's nothing that's come out about, oh, we're looking into this DJ Carter situation. The video's in your face. It's in your face. And the WNBA is going to do nothing about it, going to do nothing about it, as they've done nothing about it for most of the season. And, yes, the WNBA is against her. They've operated against her because they want to show that while she might be giving them all those rate, all that ratings and all those sales and all that merch and all that good stuff, we can do it without Caitlin Clark. So guess what? You'll find out if they get eliminated if you can do it without Caitlin Clark. But you're going to find out in the playoffs. I want to know how you can do it in the regular season because last year y'all averaged 505,000 fans viewership per game. This year, Caitlin Clark is at 1.2 million. The rest of the league is at 394,000. So your numbers went down without Caitlin Clark. Down. Caitlin Clark's numbers are what have brought them up. So don't be fake. You're fake, and we know you're fake, Andrea. You've showed it. You've shown your face so many times. Based on the actions of less than five former players. Bullshit. It's not less than five former players. There's multiple players, current players, current coaches, current ESPN pundits like yourself who kept dismissing her accomplishments and success. And I am not talking about ratings. I am talking about data, stats, success, success on the basketball court. Her numbers have been better than these other women for literally the duration of the season. Now, yeah, they, one might average more points, but are you going to argue with me that Cock Copper is better than Caitlin Clark? If you do, you're full of crap. Cock Copper don't make anyone around her better. Cock Copper is not creating points for teammates. All around player, Caitlin Clark is the best guard in the league. And she's probably the best player in the league. But people don't want to believe that one either. They want to stick to this Asia Wilson thing. Or current players, which also creates a lot of noise. Like we She got assaulted by Kennedy Carter. She got assaulted by freaking DJ Carrington. You've never called that out. You haven't called out the fact that she got eye gouged. 
You didn't find anything wrong with that. She was caught. She was disrespected by Asia Wilson, Becky Hammond, Cheryl Reeve. The list goes on and on. I mean, they've been disrespecting her all season, all season. And there's other ones that are her own teammate is sabotaging her, Melissa Smith, her own teammate. And then you have dog shit fools like freaking Cheryl Swoops who have, will diminish her own career to keep shitting on Caitlin Clark. Man, stop it. Sorry. Also tried to create a picture around Caitlin that the league from every single with Caitlin. So there was noise created from every single angle around Caitlin. You're right about the noise. There were people trying to give credit to the past players, and I completely understand. You were one of them. Why aren't you owning it? Creating something out of nothing based on the actions of one or two players or based on the words of a former player that also didn't reflect how the entire league felt. Hold on. So we're still having a conversation, Stephen A., about noise. There was a lot of noise. That's all Hold I'm on. saying. Hold on, Andrea. I don't think what Shannon said. Is- I'm going to skip Stephen A. So I'm going to get back to this one right here because he's going to go into this marketing thing, which I don't want to hear. And then Molly Kremble wants to run her mouth. I don't want to hear her fucking voice because let's get back to where it is right here. I want to call him. I want him to do it right now. Boom. And, and pivot that to how she would have done in the Olympics. That's a completely different All argument. Up, look up, look at, at that point. Look, look at how she played up until that point. Chelsea Gray had only played one game before she went to the Olympics. Diana, yeah, she yeah. was out playing Diana Taurasi. Was she out play, Was she out playing Diana Taurasi at that point in time that she was on the team? If it's simple, yes or simple, no. Was she out? Was Caitlin out playing Diana Taurasi? But you can't just fact. Boom! You're caught. You, but you can't. Yes, it's a simple yes or no question. A simple yes or no. Was she out playing her at that time? The answer is yes, and you know it's yes. Because your response is, well, it's not that simple. Yes, it is exactly that simple. This is not a voted on process like the All-Star game. This is not a fan vote. This is supposed to be five objective, except they're not objective. They're completely subjective viewers on a committee who can look at the fact that Caitlin Clark outplayed all of these women in the first half of the season, maybe even with Sabrina Ionescu, but for the most part, outplayed all of these women in the first half of the season. And you're sitting here saying, you, you guys went into this thing about, well, who should you remove? You could remove any of them because none of them deserved it over. None of them earned it over her. She earned it by her play. And this, this is this the same rhetoric. You're in current play, Shannon. That's all I'm saying. You got to factor, factor in. Factor here. But if you're factoring in Diana Taurasi's Olympic experience... Well, nobody cares about her Olympic experience. This is not a fucking Lifetime Achievement Award. Diana Taurasi's Olympic experience had her sitting the fucking bench like a 12th man scrub. She was a 12th man scrub on this team. So her Olympic experience to, the winning, to winning a gold medal meant absolutely fuck all. Because they damn near lost to France. Diana Taurasi's... Well, how she was with the team. I get hold it. On, Shannon, hold on one second. Shannon, Shannon, hold on. 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 Shannon, you make it a lifetime achievement award, and let's continue. So, no, right. Molly, you did not say that, Molly. No, I'm you did not. That's not what you said. You that's did not. That's said. not what you said, Molly. What are you guys that is talking? not what you said. I you were... And no, I literally, I'm so done. Oh, I'm a damsel in distress. Oh my God, you're attacking me, man. Oh my God, you're bullies on here. On first thing, oh, you're being so mean to me. Oh no, 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 no. Oh my God, you're being mean. Oh. I just no, brought it up. You were Molly. talking about. You were talking about nope. us make you were talking about folks making the point that excuse me at the time that they had picked the Olympic team, Caitlin Clark didn't necessarily deserve it based on her play on the court. When a well, see now Stephen Smith's back- backtracking because he's doing this. Doing this. They said she, they exactly. They said she didn't deserve it based on their play on the court, and now it's point that Shannon and I was making. That well, the point that he was making was marketing, whereas the one that Shannon's making has been about playing. I'm gonna skip to this. Oh, this is where the joke. This, this is where the joke where 
Now, Andrea. This is just going to come from different perspectives because you all's initial point. You was all's. A marketing point, and that was. Yeah. No. That was our- Shannon Sharps was not a marketing point. It was an actual play on the court point. Stephen A. Smith wanted to go to the marketing point, and the marketing point is an accurate point. But the point being, the reality was she was playing better than them already. She was having a better season than them already, and y'all de- denied that. Stephen A. Smith focused on the marketing component way too much because he didn't want to hurt some woman's feelings. He, you know, ESPN, God forbid, you take a crack at a female athlete now, you get crucified for it. This soft ass network it's become. God bless Shannon Sharp. He has no fear of losing his job. He's making a gazillion dollars on his podcast. So he doesn't care. Arguing with that was what I was arguing with. Right. Marketing yes, point for Caitlin. What Molly is trying to say, and what I agree with, is now that we have seen how Caitlin finished the season, there is a good basketball argument. But there was a good basketball argument when this when this decision was made. See, you're such a fake ass fuck right there, Andrea Carter. You're fake. You are fake. You are a fraud, a phony, fugazi. Because the argument was there when the teams were selected. The numbers proved it. The data proved it. And you're sitting here right next to me. Oh, only now? No, 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 no. You don't get off the fr- hook that easily. For her being on the team, exactly. for her making the team, there is now a great it, basketball oh, argument. What? But listen, no, 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 Shannon, listen, listen, listen. How she's playing right now, you just said it five minutes ago, was a testament to the rest that she- It wasn't a testament to shit. You're making, you know, you the rest help her probably? Yeah, sure. She was averaging damn near 18 points a game, eight and a half assists, and six rebounds at the break. Stop. She had. And the break that she had. We don't know how she would have played that. without that break. So we're saying Caitlin has now proven herself basketball wise. But you all weren't making a basketball argument. You weren't making a basketball argument. We're not saying we were not saying no, we were no, making no, a basketball No, 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 Andrea, I'm not going to let you do No, see, see, Stephen is going to the basketball argument. Shannon Sharp's not. This is the best. Shannon Sharp, Stephen is going to go this marketing thing. Shannon Sharp's like, fuck that. Go ahead, Andrea, go ahead, go ahead, I'm not going to let you make it seem like Caitlin Clark was averaging five points a game. At the time, she was that. still averaging 16 points a game, which was more than a lot of other guards that made the team. So don't I do hear. that. Don't I make it seem you. like she was but averaging was- five. I hear you. I hear you. But there were other factors. Question. And this was like a handout. No, it wasn't, it wasn't a, handout. a handout. Look at her numbers. Look at her numbers Shannon. comparable to the other guards that were on the team. That's I all I'm you. saying. No, no, no. I hear you. But when I talked to members of the Olympic Committee, the questions were of fatigue, of rest, and of the physicality and FIBA rules, and of lack of continuity with Team USA, which were things that she did not have. I'm not disputing Caitlin's greatness on the court. That's not. You damn sure were. You were disputing it like crazy. And your conversations with the freaking, let's be real. The primary, the primarily lesbian com- committee that doesn't want the straight girl to be on the team. Yeah, I know there was a couple of straight girls on the team, but they don't want to have too many heterosexual females on that team who happen to be white girls. You don't want that. You don't want that. The conversations you had, I mean, with that subjectively biased committee that wants to keep the young guard down and keep the old women up there. Diana Taurasi was a bench warmer. She was utter freaking trash in the Olympics. So tell me about the physicality that kept her on the floor or her experience. She barely played. And for a majority of that tournament of the Olympics, most of the guard play was absolutely utter atrocious from almost all of them. There were games where they were, all of them were absolutely horrendous. If it wasn't for Jackie Young in a game here and Kyle Copper in a game there, the, 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 for you can say for the duration of the Olympics, the guard plate was freaking terrible. And you're sitting here talking about the physicality of FIBA. Man, she's been getting banged up by these women in the damn WNBA all season, taking more freaking cheap shots than she might ever see in FIBA. So miss me with the fuck shit, Andrea Cotta. What I'm disputing at all. Like, I, I don't understand what you're talking you, about. Let, 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 I'm not Andrea, disputing her play. All right, I'm done with this shit. This is a joke. I'm glad Shannon Sharp held to the fire. I hope he does not invite her onto his show so she can he can backtrack on it. 
But this is the type of bogus nonsense that ESPN has been spewing all season long. They continue to do it. Drea Carter's a liar. She's a fake. She's a fraud. She's a phony. Molly Kerm is just like her. It's like a battle of the sexes of men versus women. And the fact of the matter is no offense, ladies, but men know basketball in general better than women, which is why the majority of your viewers are men. And I'm not trying to say it to be offensive, but it's a fact. Majority of men know basketball better than women. So when a person who covers the sport for his entire life, Stephen A. Smith, or another former professional athlete, Shannon Sharp, is watching and clearly watches basketball, we know what's good and what's not good. We know what's going on. They just won't say it out loud on ESPN. They won't say it that, you know what, y'all just didn't want to keep that, you want to keep that lily lily white girl, heterosexual girl down. You didn't want her to get into your shit. Andrea Carter, you're just as bad. You were part of the BS outside noise dogging her for four months. So get the fuck out of here. I'm done. Leave a comment, subscribe, like, ring that bell. Come on now. (laughs) 